meteorites, alien invaders that race through our atmosphere and crash to Earth without warning. Steve Arnold and Jeff Notkin live to exhume these scientific wonders from deep space. Numero uno! Got one! Yay! They are... Fantastic. ...the meteorite men. On a road trip across the Arizona desert, the guys decide to up the ante and gamble on not one... Oh, yeah! ...but two expeditions. I don't think so. The heat is blistering. The hunting is extreme. <sighs> they face their most supreme challenge yet. But will the arduous landscape defeat them before they find space gold? I'll tell you that. I wish that was one. But it doesn't stick to my magnet. Ah! Space rocks traveling at an astounding 17,000 miles per hour. Meteorites careen to Earth and remain buried until now. The meteorite men are in their own backyard. Well, in Jeff's backyard, at least. The great American Southwest. They're going to battle one of the most inhospitable meteor impact sites in the world, Franconia. Franconia is up in the northwestern part of Arizona, a very desolate area. This may be a really old fall, but uh, the rocks are well preserved. And uh, if you can tune your eye into it, you can spot them on top of the ground. Theoretically speaking, that's what Jeff says. We'll see. The first meteorite hunter struck Franconia gold in 2002, unearthing an H5 chondrite the most common meteorite to fall to Earth. The find triggered a space gold rush just down the road from Lake Havasu, Arizona. Jeff, who keeps his ears tuned to meteorite hunting bulletins around the globe, caught wind that Franconia is still giving up space treasure. We're only 13 miles from the strewn field, and new material's been found recently. It's a lovely H5 chondrite. Right. It's very rich in metal, makes the detector sing quite nicely. Franconia's strewn field crosses right over Interstate 40 in the Mojave Desert. This is one of the easiest strewn fields to get to in America, which is why this whole area near the highway has been massively hunted. Recent finds have recharged interest in the site, and the meteorite men don't want to be left out. Several different types of chondrites from other impacts have all been found in a single stretch of land. Which raises a question. Are there places on Earth that meteorites are more likely to fall than others? The diversity of space rocks from separate events all found at Franconia has led scientists to speculate. Could Franconia be a meteorite hotspot? Or are the overlapping strewn fields simply a fluke? Are there such things as meteorite hotspots? The fact is, here at Franconia, a number of different meteorites have been found. Meteorites that fall on this dry desert pavement will stay here for tens of thousands or perhaps hundreds of thousands of years without significantly decaying. What that means is the Franconia meteorite, which fell over there and over the area that I'm standing in now, and the Buck Mountain meteorite that was found up there, and the Palo Verde mine meteorite that was found up there, have all benefited from this ideal hunt location. Steve and Jeff make the half-hour trip to Franconia. From June to September, this part of Arizona is one of the hottest places on Earth. Every year, 800 people are admitted to hospitals because of heat-related illnesses. Faced with these extreme conditions, Steve and Jeff will have to monitor their time under the sun very carefully. This is one of those places where you really test yourself if you're going to go look for space rocks. It's summer, it's Arizona, 106, 107 degrees today. We are in the Franconia, Arizona Strongfield, out in the middle of nowhere. 
It is the blasted wilderness out here. But a great strewn field, a lot of meteorites have been found. Most meteorites break up into pieces when they pass through our atmosphere. As they fall to Earth, the larger pieces have more inertia than the smaller pieces, so they travel farther. The result is an elliptical area called a strewn field, with small meteorites at one end and increasingly larger pieces at the other. A harsh desert environment, Franconia has been virtually untouched by man for thousands of years. You see that humpback hill? I do. That's the direction that we're going to head in, towards okay. the small end. The only way to get to their target area is an uphill trek. And these ridges between us and that high hill, good hunting areas. Franconia's ground layer is a mixture of limestone and volcanic rock. The light palette is a blessing, because any dark-colored meteorites on the light topsoil will be more visible to the naked eye. They expect at least one snag in their plan. Imposters pepper the landscape, creating a potential minefield of meteor wrongs. It's a desolate wasteland of black rocks. I'll show you the sample, Franconia. Jeff and Steve conduct a visual litmus test to gauge what's terrestrial and what isn't. So here is the real thing. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, there's a texture difference. Wow. It's easy to differentiate from these. Right. But the volcanic rock that's well, been eroded with the vesicles in it, it's very similar. Except you have these black vesicles. Vesicles? Vesicles. Vesicles are small cavities in basalt that form naturally when gaseous bubbles escape from the cooling magma. The surface features on many meteorites can resemble lava at first glance. Here, it's almost little dark brown spl splotches instead of the little black shadows. We're going to use magnet canes, which is a telescopic stick with a powerful magnet attached to the end. The Franconia H5 is loaded with iron, and if you touch a magnet to it, it's going to jump on there, and you will know you have the real thing. I'd like to head east. You'll see there's a gentle slope. Uh huh. We go over that, that ridge, and mm -hmm. then beyond that ridge, it's an area where it's quite where a few all pieces. the meteorites yeah, are waiting. The only way to get to where the meteorites live is the long hike through the desert, 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Watch out for the snakes. OK, then off we go, out into the wilds. The guys ascend the ravine and begin their assault on Mojave. Here's one. Oh. It's not a meteorite, but it's metal. The guys have a tip on some untouched hunting ground along a ridge directly in front of them. It's far enough away that people, you know, haven't been hunting there much, and, and the ground's a little more favorable to spot the meteorites. Along with their eyesight, Jeff and Steve will be using metal detectors hopefully to find targets buried deeper. Metal detectors will work out here. One of the problems, though, is this terrain has a lot of hot rocks. Hot rocks are terrestrial stones that contain enough iron to ramp up a detector's signal. There are millions of them out here, which makes detecting a little grating on the nerves. The guys have arranged to meet Franconia expert Nate Ditto at the location at 11 a.m. Been tearing it up. Did you leave any behind for us? No, you know I got them all. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, you pirate. Only you'd hey, be up here on your own. Nate is a local hunter and has been searching Franconia for the past three years. I'm going to work my way over to that ridge. Right. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck to you guys, too. 
Jeff and Nate are going to try adding a little technology to their hunt using Nate's detector, while Steve takes a much more basic approach. I just want to get out here, uh, cover some ground, and uh, visually look for the rocks. So this big slope here that's open, the very little vegetation, kind of slopes up to that peak. Right. That looks good. What do you think of that? Looks promising. Let's head that way. With Nate and Jeff in plain sight, Steve works the east side of the strewn field. If there's a brown rock, it's just going to be way sticking out because everything's really light. See, like right here, see how much lighter this is? This is better than some ground, but still a little bit busy. Strange rock. Definitely not a meteorite, but just looked a little strange. Oh, there's another one right there, too. Steve stumbles on one meteor wrong after another as he surveys every inch of limestone in his path. Probably not. 70 yards west, Jeff slides his detector over some potential space rocks. Must have a lot of iron in it, but it's no meteorite. To the untrained eye, that looks like a really big meteorite, and I wish it was, but it's not. And there are millions of them out here. Every rock is black and shiny. In meteorite hunting, the old-fashioned approach is sometimes the most effective. Four hours into the hunt, Nate spots something with his naked eye. No way. Right there by the gray rock, isn't that awesome? Oh, definitely. Oh, well done. It's definitely me, right? Oh, yeah. First find of the day. That was amazingly well spotted. Look at that big chondro right there. That's gorgeous. A chondrite is a stony meteorite composed from iron and silicate minerals that have changed little since the dawn of our solar system, over four and a half billion years ago. Meteorites can be sorted into two basic categories, falls and finds. A meteorite find is a meteorite that was discovered while somebody was looking for something else. Perhaps a prospector or a fossil hunter accidentally found an old meteorite. The first Franconian meteorite was discovered on Halloween in 2002. And the meteorite men are hoping to scare up their own space gems. Come on, meteorite. Here, meteorite, meteorite, meteorite. Steve hasn't spotted a single galactic gem, and the uphill terrain is pushing him to his limits. You know, this has to rank up there as one of the most strenuous expeditions. It's been about a couple hours, up and down over hills, through ravines. Not finding anything. It is hot. As the afternoon wears on, Jeff and Nate become concerned about traversing the rocky terrain that lies in front of them. But look at the terrain. Okay. It's really slow going. Really. That's it. We said that about this ridge, and we were back there. So exactly where? Up there against the mountain ridge, and even up the mountain ridge, if you want to hit that. I've never hit that before. That's far. The guys realize they've underestimated their hike distance and time. We've discovered that what was on paper a relatively short hike is in fact a backbreaker. Are we there yet? 
Whose idea was it to come this way? Man. For once, it's not my fault. Forecast was 105, 106. I think we topped it. That's brutal. This is tough. It's just willpower at this point. Any optimism that they'll reach the ridge by sundown has waned. It's too difficult to get through this way. A few hours, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were only about halfway, I'd say. We don't have enough time to get out to the heart of the zone we want to be in and hunt it and get back before dark. We're going to have to turn back soon, unfortunately. Was brutal. Steve and Jeff have nothing to show for their hours under the relentless Arizona sun. Well, that was absolute rubbish. That was one of the worst hunts ever. He found one. He saw one by eye. Can I see it? Absolutely. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Look at that. Tell me about it. Nate won't be able to go out with us tomorrow. It's probably because he found the last one, and now there's no reason <laughs> no, for him to come but out. That was it. That, that was, was the it. last Franconia that there is. OK, well, thanks, Nate. Safe travels. Cheers. Tomorrow, no matter what it takes, the meteorite men intend to take the ridge. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to find something. I can feel it. Anything over 20 or 30 grams, I'll be happy as a pig in a bog. It's morning in Arizona's Mojave Desert. Steve Arnold and Jeff Notkin are back in the Franconia strewn field for the second of three days. First day, we spent a lot of time going up and down. It just wore us out. Today, we're going to try a different approach. They couldn't make it to the virgin hunting ground in the northwest, so they came up with an alternate route to bypass the harshest terrain. It's a little more flat where we're headed. We're going flat. so. We'll see. We are going to go straight up the wash and over that nice little ridge into the, as they say, good area. Good morning. Good Jeffrey. to see How you, buddy. You doing? All right. They won't be going alone. Local hunter Sonny Clary has offered to help guide them. Sonny was one of the very first people to hunt Franconia when it was discovered about eight years ago. And he made some amazing finds back here in the early days. These were found early on in the hunt and uh... Right. Some of the nicer specimens. That's really fantastic. They're fabulous. The guys split up to cover more ground. Today, it's Jeff who hunts solo. You know, Steve, if we can walk our way out in these lower flats here and stay up on the high ridges and, you know, walk these rock piles, that might be our highest chance. OK. Oh, dude, it's getting hot, Steve. I know. The three of them are on the lookout for stone meteorites, space rocks that look deceptively similar to those born on Earth. If we look back towards oh, the wow. sun, yeah. they all look the same. They're all dark shadows. But if you look this yeah. way, you can see the different colors, the oranges, the reds. Right. OK. A big one you're going to spot a mile away, but a little one's going to be a little harder to find, and so. Oh, look, a little horny toad. Look how cute he is. It's a Steve Arnold first, a four-legged meteor wrong. Do they bite? No, these guys are... Oh, look at you. Look at him. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> All right, let's go find rocks, not toads. Uh, 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 uh. 
Oh, it's a big one. The only thing they spot is a big meteor rock. No. This is the problem out here. Some of these rocks are hot, Steve. With and the it... Franconias, you've got to dig everything out here. Only the most diligent search will separate the meteorites from the meteor rocks. They are just literally everywhere. I can see at least a half a million from here. We're kind of banking right now that there's a little bit more here at this zone. It's going to attract more of the hunters, but there's maybe more pieces that the other hunters have missed. See the hot rock. Really, where? Oh. Their trail gets colder with each step. See, Steve, all the old pattern people have been up here digging already, all over well, up here. Well, is that what we're looking at? Oh, here we go. Oh, cow, there it is. Ha <laughs> ha. Ow. <laughs> That's, That's kind of hot. 50 cal? I think so. If hot rocks aren't enough, the skies above the strewn field were used by the Air Force for target practice during World War II. I'm wandering along, looking for that special, looking for something a little bit different. And it doesn't get much more different than this right here. Looks to be a 50 caliber shell. Fell uh, from an airplane probably shooting it out. Target practice, or at least shooting practice. Anyway, not what I'm looking for, but I'll pack it out. Stay me here, Magnum, for a minute. This is where we're up against. The Franconias look 100% like that right there. But as you can tell, Boop. it's not. It's not. Before modern day Franconia harbored a strewn field, the entire area was a molten lava field. So it's abundant with volcanic rocks called basalt. Basalts are igneous rocks which means they form after molten lava or magma cools and solidifies. They take on a black, roundish character, and the desert wind has eroded and polished them with sand over the millennia. Herein lies a problem for Steve and Jeff. The meteorites look almost exactly like these brown volcanic rocks that are lying all over the surface. So in other words, you could not come to a place that's more difficult to hunt than this. Meteorite impact sites are rare enough as it is, but the Franconia site is especially rare and crowded with other space gems. As you get towards the Buck Mountains, they discovered three or four different meteorites unrelated to the Franconia strewn field. Different types of space rocks could indicate several falls over time, all within approximately 15 miles of each other. Guys originally thought that they had found an iron strewn field overlapped with the right. chondritic strewn field. If the theory holds true, the Franconia strewn field could be a hot spot, a region on Earth where meteorites gravitate from outer space. If you look at a map of where all the meteorites have been found on the Earth, there appears to be hot spots. Hot spot is a term used to describe an area where more than one meteorite has been discovered. But is it science fact or science fiction? Are there areas on the planet where meteorites are more likely to fall? The theory implies the Earth has a gravitational pull on meteoroids before they reach the atmosphere. So. As meteorites fall closer to the planet, a magnet-like force in space pushes them down to certain areas like Franconia. But is it true? It's a fact that you can go to certain places on the planet, for example, Franconia or Kansas or the Atacama Desert in Chile, and have a better chance of finding more meteorites there. It doesn't mean that more fell there. It just means that they have been better preserved over time, and the conditions are perfect for finding them. 
Steve, I've always imagined you as something of a master of chaos. And in this experiment, you're going to have the opportunity to be the power of the cosmos, unleashing meteoritic doom upon the surface of your own planet. Are you up for the challenge, soldier? I'm up for it. I knew you would be. So I thought we'd get this paintball gun, mm -hmm. and this little purple sphere represents a meteoroid that's going to slam into the surface of our planet. Okay. And the map of the Earth will represent the possible target areas where it could land. To try and mimic the randomness of meteorite impacts on Earth, I'm going to ask you to wear a blindfold. OK. You game? I'm game. I thought you might be. Putting that on. That's it. OK, I'm now going to hand you your weapon. And let's say you're on a collision course with Earth. All right. It's a hit. Can I look? Let's let's take a look. Here we are. Oh. So our first meteorite impact was just off the coast of uh, Rio de Janeiro, perfectly illustrating our point that meteorites land randomly over the surface of the Earth, and most of them will never be recovered because they fall in the oceans. Now, there would have been a bright fireball over Rio de Janeiro. They would have seen it, but... It's very likely. So should we repeat the experiment? Why not? A hit and fire. Should we go have a look? Let's go have a look. Oh, my goodness! Just off the coast of the South Island of New Zealand, we have so far launched four meteorites, mm -hmm. meteoroids, towards the Earth. Three of them have been in the water. That's about statistically right. It is. Yeah. Let's do some more. This is fun. All right. So in this next part of the experiment, I want you to unleash a barrage of meteorites. Do you think you can handle that? Yeah, I think I'm up for it. This could get dangerous, so I am putting on the eye protection. Master. So you just want me to start spinning around in circles, shooting as fast as I can? That is exactly what I do not want you to do. Oh. Or if you are going to do that, let me know. I'll go get in the truck. OK. So Steve Arnold, Master of Chaos, are you ready to cause mass destruction? Ready, sir. I knew you would be. And let that planet have it. <laughs> Whoa! Steve, look, look what we're seeing here. One, two, three, four, 13, 14, 21, Off 22 here. wet impacts. And then of the land impacts, so one, two, three, this one clobbered Boston. I would say that probably was seen. Eight, nine, ten. That one's questionable. Yeah. At least two in extremely remote areas. So of the 31 impacts, we can surmise that perhaps eight of them might be recoverable. If that's not hard science, I don't know what is. Me either. After a grueling two-hour-long hike, Jeff is the first to arrive in the Northwest Quadrant. I've come a good couple of miles, I should think. Jeff's detector catches some promising sounds in no time. There's a little guy right on the surface. Yay. <laughs> wow. I didn't see him. The detector did. Oh, yeah, that's definitely one. It's got little tiny metal elements sticking out. You can see the kind of, it's got a kind of a shine to it. It glistens a little bit. Whopping 9.7 grams. It's just little, but complete stone, very gorgeous. This Franconia chondrite is only worth about $20. Jeff's after bigger and better. Let's see what else is up here. Jeff's hunch to stick around his patch of the desert has led him to another signal. Seriously? <laughs> Look at that. <sighs> wow, that was really tucked in there. 
Well, there's no doubt that that's the real thing. You'd have to be standing right on top of it to see it visually. And I, I missed it by eye, but the detector caught it. I would probably value it at about $500. <laughs> Meanwhile, almost a mile away, Steve and Sonny continue to strike out. We're hitting about as far as we can go out, and so we need to work our way back uh, towards camp. What'd you find? Nothing. What'd you do, buddy? No way, Jeff. Yeah, OK, you can see this one. Your, your eyes are too bad to see that one. It's true. The metal detector found both of them. I'd like to look for more meteorites, but not here. Not that I have anything against Franconia. I do. It's the temperature it's terrible. that I'm against. What interesting site is southeast of us, a couple of hours away? Holbrook. Should be a lot cooler up there, Jeff. And there's going to be dozens of them. All right, well, let's pack up and go to Holbrook. With cooler climbs and a new hunt site, the guys are confident that Holbrook will deliver the goods. In central Arizona, Steve Arnold and Jeff Notkin are heading east on iconic Route 66. Along the way, Steve and Jeff stumble on another spot for hidden treasures. My new car! This will go great with the truck. Can't you see that? You should get to it. Hello! <laughs> a roadside shop dedicated to America's Main Street. Route 66. Root beer. That is a must-have. Oh, very nice. Excellent. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. That would look really good behind my bar. Jeff, you can get one of these. <laughs> Nice. I'm getting a patch. One quick toast to Americana. What a fantastic place. Yeah. Oh, thank you. There you go. Cheers to Route 66 with Route 66 root beer. You just cannot beat that. Mmm. It's good oh, stuff. Wow. And the guys are back on the road and back on task. The guys have just finished a grueling hunt in the Mojave Desert. Whose idea was it to come this way? But are making tracks to a different location. The Holbrook meteorite site is located about 300 miles away. The fact that we've had some heavy rains up here could be good. Yeah. The theory being that there are little meteorites in the sand dunes and that heavy rainfall might wash some of them out. Sonny Clary also made the trip from Franconia, along with his dog, Bricks. Suzanne Morrison has also joined the expedition, and she's somewhat of a legend around the strewn field. How many have you found over the years out Ten, here? Hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah. Okay. Hundreds. So, so yeah. how But far... I've been hunting for since, like, 94. You know what? If he throws up a meteorite now out of that dirt. No, he just starts digging. He loves that cold <laughs> dirt. Dig. It is cool. It's got to be what? Three degrees different? Yeah, 40, maybe? <laughs> At least. That's quite a change from Franconia. That's going to be a beautiful day. Just like Franconia, they decide to forego their metal detectors. Just magnets. Yes. Magnets. Yeah, the ground's very mineralized out here, and it it interferes with detectors and also Holbrook's an L slash LL6, so They're comparatively small iron. Yeah. Be difficult to find with a detector, I think. Meteorites are classified into categories, like a periodic table based on origin, structure, and composition. L slash LL6 means it's been highly altered on its parent body and it has very low iron. Still a lot compared to earth rocks, but much less than most other meteorites. So it gives a false return to most detectors. While the meteorite men had limited success looking for a find in Franconia. No. No. Oh. They hope to do better searching for a fall here in Holbrook. All meteorites fall to the ground. But if they've been witnessed to fall, we call them witness falls or for short falls. 
Those are meteorites that we are able to put a specific day and usually a specific time, and there's usually a story that goes with it. Holbrook is a witnessed fall. It was actually seen to come out of the sky and hit the ground back in 1912. The massive meteorite hit just before dusk on July 19th. It was heralded by a loud blast. Then thousands of smaller stones shower down on the area. There was a family that actually, a young boy was outside and came running back in after the meteorite rained down upon him and told his mom, Mom, it's raining rocks. Wow. And do we know where the family lived approximately? From what I've heard, there's a station, the old station house is just over the track this way. So that's that way? Yes. And we think that the strewn field is sort of... For the most part, it runs pretty well right directly along a railroad track. Well, which direction should we go, Jeff? What do you like? What do you, what do you suggest You know here? what? Anywhere in here. I think the bigger ones have been found by this bush over here and out through here, so we can just really? start to work. Yeah, there was a three-pounder found over here. Cool. Well, let's me. start finding these puppies. So I'm going to bring along the shovel, just in case I want to do a little digging. This is my favorite and most lucky magnet cane. It has a magnet with a 78-pound pull on it. That's not going anywhere. And let the hunt begin. The meteorite hunters decide to split up. Sonny and Bricks head out on an ATV, while Steve and Suzanne pair up. Jeff, on the other hand, decides to tackle the strewn field alone. As the meteorite hunters scour the scorching desert floor, they appear to be out of luck at first. Lots of little stones out here, but they're not meteorites. But then... Get it? Hey, something stuck. That's from the railroad. That's a cinder. It's a cinder? Yeah. I would like to get onto the other side. Other oh, railroad tracks? Yes. Got to take advantage of the shade while I can get it. Wow, that is one long train. Steve scours the high desert plains east of the railroad tracks. Jeff is on the west side. What is that? It's a bit puzzling. I'll probably have to have a closer look at that one. I don't think so. But he seems to be on the wrong side of the tracks for space gold. Just walking along, looking for the little black rock that's going to stick on the magnet. <laughs> Look at that. I wish that was one. Look how well that sticks out. But it doesn't stick to my magnet. <laughs> Much better now. Rex, let's go. Let's go find some. Sonny and Bricks head south. And Suzanne and Steve split up to cover more terrain. Whoa! Oh. This ground out here has been picked over a lot. <laughs> Just what I need. Crystal ball. Where are the meteorites? Oh man, wouldn't that be nice? Eh. Stick, 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 stick. Guess it's not.
This didn't stick very well to the magnet. Oh, that's a meteorite. That is a Holbrook meteorite. Very weathered, broken stone. Oh, that's fantastic. This face has lovely black fusion crust on it. Now, that was created when this, along with thousands of other rocks, burned through the atmosphere, actually toasting its exterior skin. Oh, 3.2 grams. <laughs> the meteorites out here are small. They're not, they're not the big monsters. Anyway, success comes in small packages. Hoping to score bigger tomorrow, the guys call it a day. Day two in Holbrook, and it's the crack of dawn. Steve and Jeff head out to rejoin Sonny. Their goal today is to cover as much ground as possible before the oppressive desert heat gets too intense. Say hi. Hi, Briggs. Come over, say hi. The guys initiate a new plan over a map of the Holbrook strewn field. My guess, this area hasn't been touched. That's the direction of flight. There should be bigger pieces that way. I agree with you. I'd love to go up and have a look at that. The three hunters drive as far north as they can, and then each takes on a remote section of strewn field by foot. So far, I'm not finding them. You start really doubting yourself, am I even in the strewn field? Steve is pushing as hard as he can. He struck out in the desert oven of Franconia. Here's one. Oh. Yeah! Oh, he... oh, yeah! <laughs> Where's everybody at? Check it out. Wow, this may be the very last one in the whole place. <sighs> at least I got it. About 40 yards west of Steve's turf, Jeff stumbles upon another army of hunters. The, the ants in Holbrook have sometimes encountered little meteorite fragments while excavating their homes. And as ants do, they take the debris and they throw it outside onto the top of the ant hill. So there are a large number of very small stone fragments here on the surface of this hill. Is it possible these soldier ants have unearthed Holbrook meteorite fragments? I'm first going to collect some pieces using a little trick. So I'm going to use a brand new clean magnet, and I'm going to put it inside a bag because it's going to make it a lot easier to separate the fragments from any other debris when I'm done. Oh, look, we're already picking up some stuff. There are four little fragments. I'm going to take a quick look with the very powerful loop. Oh, that's definitely a meteorite. I can see fusion crust. And weathering cracks in the fusion crust, which is caused by extremes of heat and cold. Thanks, guys. Jeff has a hunch other space gems could be nearby. Oh, definitely. <laughs> there it is. Broken in half. That is a half individual. And this face has beautiful fusion crust on it. 3.5 grams. That's a new record for me. <laughs> the previous largest one I found was 3.2. Now Jeff and Steve want to know exactly what they've got. After a punishing week traversing both Holbrook and Franconia strewn fields, Jeff and Steve get back on Route 66 one more time and head to the lab. Dr. Garvey at Arizona State University will have an opinion on the hot spot theory. Good to see you, Steve. Good to see you, Jeff. How was Holbrook? Dr. Lawrence Garvey is a leading expert in the field of meteoritic science. 
It's Holbrook. It's yeah. just little guys. Good things come in small packages. So they say. Jeff can't wait to verify the composition of his Franconia space rock. As you know, numerous different meteorites have now been found in a rather small area. Over a 15-mile area, Franconia could harbor up to five different strewn fields, each site containing space rocks from a different parent body. This is an H5. I think they've actually found some H4s. An H5 is a chondrite, or a stony meteorite. Its high iron content usually accounts for about 30% of its weight. But the H5 is one of many types of space rocks that have been discovered at Franconia. I know when they, when they looked at a whole range of the Franconia finds, they also found some that don't quite fit this structure. It's a very good opportunity to, to debunk this so-called meteorite hotspot term that's, that's thrown around. The idea that more meteorites have fallen in this desert than other deserts is wrong. A meteoroid's trajectory begins during the moment of ascent from the far corners of the solar system. Once the meteoroid enters the atmosphere, Earth's gravity takes over and pulls it to the surface. Where it ends up is pure happenstance. Meteorites fall randomly over the entire surface of the Earth. But the truth is, there are some places in which meteorites are better preserved than elsewhere, the natural environment of a strewn field determines how well it stands the test of time. Meteorites that fall on this dry desert pavement will stay here for tens of thousands or perhaps hundreds of thousands of years without significantly decaying, and the conditions are perfect for finding them. And so you're able to recover a lot of meteorites there, but that doesn't mean that more fell there. Would you concur? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's really a preservation. Are they preserved? the weathering is very slow, then in a sense they'll be preserved over time and we'll find more. You might think we'd feel it a bit inconsequential to come out here and <laughs> find a couple of pieces this big, but it's not inconsequential. Yay. <laughs> and they all have a place in our hearts. It's only little, but it's very cute. And they all have a place in the science of meteoritics. Fantastic. <laughs>